I have always been an artist. I always wanted to be when I was a kid, and I just didn't think it was possible for anybody to ever be successful in art. I just didn't think that it was an attainable goal at all. When I went to college, I, I majored in art. Through college, I loved my painting classes, my drawing classes, figure drawing, I especially loved um, art history. I loved all of it. But then when I was done with college, I just went and waited tables and then went, got, went into real estate in a soul crushing, you know, corporate America situation. Did that for 10 years. And then when the bubble burst, um, I was laid off and I was also pregnant at the time. So nobody's about to hire a pregnant lady. <laughs> and I just started painting. And it was your proverbial midlife crisis where I started really just painting as therapy and I thought to myself, this is something different. It wasn't just, oh, painting a pretty picture and hanging it on the wall. Like I realized that something was ignited in me that was what I was really supposed to offer to the world. My name is Amanda Moody and I'm a mixed media resin artist. The art that I'm known for is typically really colorful, really fluid, and almost always coated with epoxy resin, which is a two-part chemical that you mix together and it turns into like a honey consistency. And you pour it over your surface and then you have to torch it and get all the specks of animal hair and bubbles out of it. Um, and you babysit it until it's cured, which takes about 24 hours. Um, and typically I do multiple layers, so with some materials in between the layers, so they're a little bit more three-dimensional and um, more interesting the closer you get to them. I'm always open to the challenge of a commission. Um, I typically don't paint with a plan in mind, but Commissions give me a parameter to follow, so it's a little bit of a challenge for me. Otherwise, I would, I might not push myself a lot as far as trying anything new. I've known Scott and Michelle for about 25 years. They are family friends, and they were the first couple who saw potential in me when I started painting professionally at the very beginning and they wanted their home filled with local artists. And they approached me about two paintings and I was just excited that I could pay the mortgage that month. <laughs> and they still have them hanging in their house and they've just been the biggest support to me throughout my entire career. How are you? Good, how are you? It's so good to see you. It's good to see you too. Always. It's been a while. Yes, it has been a while. I'm so excited to be doing this for you guys. I know, we're excited to get our fourth piece from you. It's crazy. Yes. It's crazy. So I was thinking this new piece that you're going to do for us, I'd like to have it in our office. Yeah. Um, so we, I've got a decent sized wall in there. And yeah. That's what I was really thinking it should um, hang. Okay. Um, I'll let you look at it and kind of give me an idea of what size you think we should do. The ceilings are pretty high in there. They are. I'm thinking vertical for sure okay. for that space. Okay. At least six feet tall. Perfect. So. Yes. Um, and I'll confirm measurements, but maybe like a six by four, like a nice vertical portrait size. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I want to do a little bit brighter colors than maybe the last couple we've done. Maybe add some orange and some red, some more um, floral. Um, like tropical, kind of? Um, I would say more on the tropical side. Yeah. You know how Scott loves the ocean. So. Yes. What I'd like to do for you guys is to do an aluminum panel. So I'm painting on that instead of my typical wood. Oh, that's nice. That'll be different. Yeah. Yes. A little bit of an industrial feel in the Perfect. background. Mm -hmm. And uh, some texture that maybe you haven't seen in my pieces before. Um, you can do some gold accents in there too, but the background I'm picturing silver for this space. Okay. We're uh, excited. Looking sweet. forward to our fourth piece from you. I'm so excited yeah. and honored. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'll hang up. For Scott and Michelle, I'm going to be painting on a large sheet of aluminum, which I've never done before. But I typically like 
incorporating metallics into a lot of my work. So it's gonna be a little bit experimental. I am so sentimental about Michaels. The Michaels that I shop at is the same one that I've been going to since I was a kid. It's the easiest place to go when I just need one or two things. They always have it in stock and they're super friendly there. Materials are everything to me. I would say 95% of the process for me, the importance in the process. Um, figuring out how things are gonna tell you what they wanna create. I always say that the paint kinda talks to me and tells me what it wants to be. I've never really had like, oh, I want this painting to look like this. I still am not really like that. I don't really ever have a plan other than maybe a color palette. And then I just start messing with the materials. All right, so this is an aluminum panel and it starts off looking like stainless steel, like a fridge or so. But I have a coat of clear gesso on top of it right now. Basically, I have my colors set aside that I want to use, and I just, I just start moving. And I don't really, the beginning part of a painting, I, I kind of just let the paint go wherever it wants to go. And then if there's an area that I want to keep that looks interesting to me, then I'll do that. And if there's something that kind of, that I want to change, I can always paint over it. You'll notice that I don't, typically use a palette when I'm painting. I use my painting as a palette. And it might not be the least wasteful, but for my process, it just allows me to see how colors mix together as I'm painting. But at first, I'm really just messing around, seeing what the paint does, making movements, and then it just kind of appears to me. I think the main challenge of this piece is just going to be the size. I've done pieces even larger than this before, but not on aluminum. So I'm a little, I think the thing I'm most nervous about is the edges of the resin because it's such a sharp edge and whether or not I want to have the resin pour over the sides or if I want a clean taped off edge. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna work that yet, but I'll figure it out. So, this clearly did not work. I used a primer and it did not like the materials that I put on top of it. So my plan is to sand all of this off and start over clean without a primer. And I think if I sand it first, the paint will adhere without adding any additional material on it. I'm not upset. <laughs> Mistakes always lead to something better. The plan is to make some texture with the sander so you can see it hopefully underneath the paint that I'm gonna put on later. I have gotten to the point in my career where I actually love mistakes. I used to get discouraged when things didn't go exactly as planned, but now when I get mad at a painting and I have to trash it or put it in time out for a while, I get excited because after those mistakes is always the next really good thing. So I just know that I'm one step closer. So I actually get encouraged when I make a mistake at this point. There's never been something in my life that I've said, oh, I regret that. Everything, there is a reason for everything. Um, in painting, when you try something new and you fail and you make some lumpy resin painting, you will learn from that and create something better.
Honestly, it's always been paint for me. And it's just, paint really has so many possibilities to me that it, so far I'm very, very satisfied with the, the spectrum of what I get to do with the materials that I use. The colors, the different textures of the paint and the way that they, that the colors sing together is, that's my jam. It's, it's not like, oh, what's your favorite color? It's yellow. It's, I love yellow and peach and lavender together. I love the way that those marry. And that to me is the color aspect of it is just, that's where it's at. This is by far my favorite part of the process. When areas start to show up that I know I want to maintain and keep for the final composition. And I have a good idea, more than a good idea of where the piece is going. And I also can tell exactly where I'm going to correct or tweak things and details start to emerge. I'm a big fan of those. So this is the most exciting part to me. The sanding process has actually turned into a benefit in a lot of ways. It's pulling through some texture that I did not think was gonna be there with aluminum. Usually when I paint on wood, it comes through really, really easily. But this has like a little industrial kind of patina effect in some areas because the aluminum is a little uneven where I sanded it. <laughs> I'm really excited. I love the scale of it. I love the vibrancy of it. I love clients that don't mind taking risks. I think they're gonna love it. But the color palette is really, like these reds are like maraschino cherry red to me and the way each color is playing off of the ones nearby is it's exactly what I wanted and more actually. <laughs> so the stage that I'm at right now is finalizing some details on the ribbons of color that you see on the panel right now. Also going to add a couple of florals, um, some tropical white hibiscus style abstract flowers. And then once those are dry, I'll pour on the first layer of resin, let that cure, and then I'll do more florals on top of that. So by the time the last layer of resin cures, those flowers will be kind of floating above the surface and casting a little bit of a shadow that you can tell when you, you'll be able to see it when you move up really closely. So now we're to the point of where I'm putting down the first layer of resin. Most of my pieces are multi-layered and I sandwich different materials in between each cured layer. Each layer takes up to 24 hours to cure and then finish the sides um, after the last layer is poured. Make sure your surface is super level. Okay, so epoxy resin is a two-part process. One's a hardener and one's the actual resin and then once you activate them by mixing them together, then you pour the whole thing and spread it around. And then you have to sit and babysit it for 24 hours. <laughs> Actually, no, just for like an hour. You have to sit and make sure no hairs land in it. 
bugs, that kind of thing. use a heat gun to pop all the bubbles that I possibly can. Um, the heat makes the air rise to the surface and then after all those bubbles are gone then we let it sit and we panic and lose sleep till it's cured. Resin is, it can be the bane of your existence if you if you don't accept the fact that it is going to be a challenge to use. I've had bugs land in resin before and if you catch it soon enough you can tweeze them out and then it'll level itself out but if it's too late then you're going to have to do the entire layer over again. So it can be very expensive and very time consuming um, and if you wind up doing multiple layers then it winds up being super heavy and then you have challenges in hanging the piece as well. So it's all very kind of like suspenseful when you're doing it, you know? And you pray for no bubbles, you pray for no dog hair and bugs, and then like the next morning you go into your studio and you look and you're like, I pray to the resin gods that it's okay, <laughs> you know? And it's the best feeling when it's perfect. It's always hard to let a piece of art go. I mean, I spend so much time on them, on each one of them that's like, I usually call them my children, but just knowing that they're bringing somebody else joy. So that makes it a little bit easier to let them go. This? So close. There. Good to go. The paint color is perfect with it. I am loving the aluminum. This is gonna be a new constant for me. So install is done. I can't wait to see it, I'm so excited. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right, close your eyes. Okay. I'm gonna hold your hand. Okay. You trust me? I trust you. <laughs> Keep them closed. Can't wait to see it. Okay, open. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh my, it's exactly, oh my God. I'm actually going to cry. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It is exactly what we wanted. Oh, I am. I'm going to cry. I love it so much. Oh, I love the colors. I love that you popped it with the yellow, the orange, the red. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so different yeah. from what you've done for us in the past, and I'm, I'm blown away. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is amazing. Oh. Hey. Hello. And I love how the flowers are floating. They look like they're just floating and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Amanda. You're welcome. You're Anytime. so amazing no, and so talented. I'm so grateful for you guys. Yes. I really oh, am. Oh gosh, you're very talented. Thank you so much. Like nothing I've ever seen. Yes, it's gorgeous. I, I, and I love, I, the green is perfect with the gold hints to it. It's gorgeous. Wow. You're, you're such a talent. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Thank you. Just okay. <laughs> right. It is gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. It just bought this whole room mm -hmm. to life. And I've always said I need to put something there, but I wanted it to be the right piece. And this is definitely the right piece. I mean, it's perfect. It's the perfect size. The colors are awesome. And for my favorite artist. And for my favorite artist. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just Great. beautiful. It's it all going to make me cry. <laughs> This piece looks fantastic in their space. It's a smaller office with super high ceilings and I feel like they just needed this giant, colorful, uplifting focal point for them to look at while they're working. It was kind of a full circle moment to see Scott and Michelle react the way they did to this piece, especially since they were my very first commissions and have multiple pieces of mine throughout my career and now for them to own this piece 
and love it as much as they do just means the world to me. I love the way that the colors marry together in this piece. A lot of clients are afraid of the color orange, but Scott and Michelle were just open to letting me run with it, and I think it really worked. In painting, when you try something new and you fail, it's humbling to me, and maybe that's where inspiration comes from, is some humility. To find my zone, that elusive zone of creating that we're all after, even when I don't want to work that day or don't feel that I'm inspired, you know, I make myself do it. I just start and I don't expect anything to be a masterpiece necessarily. When something does fail, something really amazing always comes right after it.